sometimes all you really need to do is to just buy Bitcoin because the reality of fiat currencies, it's freaking terrifying, man. In today's video, I'm going to share some news from the fiat world and why, just why Bitcoin is such a damn attractive asset to hold. Also, the latest on the Bitcoin ETF, as well as some technicals. You know how we do it around here. My name is Lark. Every single day, I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's a topic you'd like to stay up to date with, to learn some more about, then make sure you subscribe to the Lark Davis channel. Also, take a quick second to tap on the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm if you do appreciate this kind of content. And if you want to know when I put out a new video, make sure to click on the notification bell as well. Now, if you want to earn some safe and simple passive income, you should definitely look into getting yourself an account over on Celsius. You can earn 6.2% on your Bitcoin, 5.35% on your Ethereum, and 8.88% on your dollar stable coins. If you use the link down below to start your account, you're even going to get an extra $50 Bitcoin bonus. So go ahead and check that out. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the charts here. We can see Bitcoin currently making an attempt to break out of this essentially descending triangle that it's caught up in at the moment. We need it to break above this top line here. So we would want to see Bitcoin closing a daily candle right now around $43,650 approximately in order to break out of this downtrending pattern here. If we fail to do that, if we fail to do that, then you know what that means. That is simply yet another lower peak, meaning we are still stuck in a downtrend for Bitcoin. So we have here, this could end up being just another lower peak for Bitcoin coming back down once again to test this lower $40,000 area. So we'll keep an eye out to see, of course, if that happens. But if we do get the break above that top green line here, then that would indicate a trend reversal potentially coming in here for Bitcoin. That, of course, just looking at the, the smaller picture here. The big picture, of course, is that we have this incredible downtrend right here. Ever since our peak back here in mid-April, we had a valiant rally here, which put in a lower peak, essentially, around $53,000. We need to break above now $50,000 and hold above it with some good strong volumes and decent daily candles. Then we can say, hey, the trend is reversing here. We're about to, you know, lift off to new all-time highs. Until we get that break of $50,000, we are still in the downtrend. So even if we rally up to $47,000, dollars dollars $50,000 in the next few days, you got to understand that still has not broken us out of the downtrend. Only once we break above $50,000 are we out of the bigger downtrend that Bitcoin is in right now. Also, we can have a look here at the weekly. It can definitely help sometimes to zoom out a little bit. So we can see here, let's put that trend line back on there. We can see here the MACD is about to have a bearish crossover on the weekly. It really depends on if we do get that smaller uh, breakout here in that shorter time frame from the descending triangle that we're in right now. If we can break out of that, that would probably stave off this bearish trend reversal right here that we're potentially facing at the moment. The stochastic RSI, of course, still in a pretty strong downtrend here. So we'll have to see how that goes over the next few days as we come up to our weekly close. But currently, we do have some indicators on the weekly that show that we could be in for some more uh, either bearish or lackluster action. I don't know what else they can throw at us. Maybe the SEC will come out with some dramatic news. Maybe China will ban Bitcoin for the 17th time. I wouldn't put it past them. Seems like a thing that could definitely, definitely happen. Of course, as I mentioned, I do have buy orders in for Bitcoin at $38,000, Ethereum at $2,500. So if I get those buy orders filled, that's sweet. If I don't, you know, say la vie. I would love actually to just see the prices explode for us to get some really bullish news and to break out past that $50,000 mark and start talking about getting some new all-time highs coming in for Bitcoin. But until we get some significant movements here, I think we're going to continue to have a bit of a shaky market. One reason, of course, for that is that the fear 
the fear is still a big force in the market. The Bitcoin fear and greed index still trending lower, still trending lower. Last time I looked at it, it was at 23, I think. Now it's down to 20. Lots of uncertainty in the market, lots of fear in the market right now. Everybody's worried about what's happening with the U.S. regulatory scene. Everybody's worried about what's happening with Evergrande in China. Everybody's worried about what's happening with the crypto regulations in China. So there's a lot of stuff weighing on the market right now. People are worried that you know the equity markets are going to take a dive and all that stuff. Lots of uncertainty, lots of fear, lots of doubt. FUD opportunities are the best times for buying in the market, for averaging in to your positions, right? You don't need to go all in at the first sign of trouble. Oh my gosh, Bitcoin's down 5%. percent we got to go all in. Well, then you miss out if it goes down another 5% or down another 10%. Averaging in on red days tends to be a pretty good uh, time to be adding to your long-term accumulation stack. What's interesting here too is that right now, as so often happens when we see fear in the market, Short-term holders are sacrificing themselves to the whales. Again, just basically plankton, just jumping straight into the whales' mouths. I don't know if you guys ever saw those nature documentaries where the, the plankton and the little fish and stuff like that, they're just jumping straight into the whales' mouths. That's what's happening here. We have short-term holders who are selling. Selling, right? These people are realizing losses. So right now we have short-term holders realizing minor losses on chain. The assumption from a lot of these short-term holders, newer investors, is going to be, well, Bitcoin's down. We're going to go much lower. This is the start of the new bear market. Bitcoin's going back to, I don't know, $500, $1,000, $10,000, whatever the bearish projections might be from uh, some of these people out there making those pretty insane bearish calls right now. People are hoping they can buy back lower, but I think a lot of people are simply going to get caught on the sidelines as the crypto market starts to rally in Q4. Yes, we could have some more bearish price action in the coming days or weeks, but I'm still very bullish for Q4 overall. But the short-term holders, their conviction is being tested. People are selling. We're getting shakeouts in the markets. We're getting capitulation events happening. This is exactly what we're seeing playing out right now in the market. So once again, short-term holders handing over their money to the whales. And interestingly, this report just came out. 62% of institutions to start investing in crypto within a year. Now, this was a survey that was done with just 50 different wealth managers and 50 different institutional investors across the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and the United Arab Emirates. Of those surveyed, 62% who had zero exposure to cryptocurrencies said they expect to make their first investments within the next year. Now, if we can think of that as being more indicative of the wider wealth manager and institutional investor scene, there's a wall of money coming to crypto. And I think once we start seeing things like ETF products being approved, that uh, wall, that dam of money is going to be unleashed upon the market. These guys are interested. They want exposure. They want to get in. They understand the value propositions. They're coming. The big money's coming. It's been trickling in and trickling in and trickling in. And it's just going to keep trickling in until that trickle turns into uh, a torrent and the torrent turns into a flood and the flood turns into an all out tsunami kind of craziness. That will probably be, you know, later in the decade, the tsunami of money. But Certainly, we are at the uh, the trickle and increasing water analogies <laughs> at this stage. So you got to zoom out. You have to look at the big picture. Institutional investors do. The hedge fund managers, these guys, they are playing the big game. They're playing the long game. You know, they're not afraid to uh, buy the Bitcoin from the short term holders, essentially. Next, let's talk about uh, Bitcoin ETF news. So the first ever multi-crypto ETF in North America is launching in Canada. Of course, it's launching. It's not going to launch in the United States, guys. Come on. Come on. Gary Gensler is never going to allow that to happen. Happening in Canada. So this is going to be about uh, two thirds Bitcoin, one third Ethereum comprised of existing market ETFs 
in Canada. See, there's so many crypto ETFs already in Canada. They have a wide selection to choose from. I think there's four or five Bitcoin ETFs now. Uh, we've got two or three Ethereum ETFs now. So this is now a cool product. So people who want to get broader market exposure, instead of just going out and finding, well, I'm going to buy a Bitcoin ETF and an Ethereum ETF, you can get both in one. Now, these guys also said that as Canada approves more ETF products for other cryptocurrencies, and you know that's going to happen, we're going to see Solana ETFs, Polkadot ETFs, uh, Cosmos ETFs, Dogecoin ETFs probably at some point. You all, oh, you laugh now, but you watch. In a few years, people are going to be trading Dogecoin ETFs. Hear me now, quote me later. It's coming, guys. It's coming, and it's going to be ridiculous when it does happen. These guys have said that as more ETF products are approved in Canada, they will add those into this particular fund, which trades under the ticker ETC. Canada, once again, completely outmaneuvering the USA here. Now they're launching more complicated crypto ETF funds. Well, meanwhile, in the USA, they can't even get a single Bitcoin ETF approved. Now, Gary Gensler, Wall Street's boy in the SEC, he's come out to once again reiterate his support for a Bitcoin futures-backed ETF. Again, as we discussed at great length on this channel before, a Bitcoin futures-backed ETF is Wall Street garbage. Garbage of the best kind, only from Wall Street, of course. This essentially takes CME Bitcoin futures, which are cash settled and not backed by a single Satoshi of real Bitcoin, and they are trying to make that. It's been stated before, by the way. They want to make that into the price standard of Bitcoin. They want the CME Bitcoin futures to be the way in which the price of Bitcoin is decided. They want to take away the importance from the spot markets, bring a flood of money into the ETF markets backed by Bitcoin futures. That's how Wall Street manipulates Bitcoin. That is not good. Gary, man. Gary, what a bad actor this guy is. Anyway. We could, of course, see that uh, Bitcoin futures ETF being approved in the near future. There's a lot of rumor and speculation flying around that October is going to be the month when we do see this garbage put out for regular people to come and eat. Obviously, we want a spot Bitcoin ETF. There's lots of good applications from companies like Fidelity and Morgan Stanley and Invesco, like literally the world's biggest, most influential companies are trying to get Bitcoin spot ETFs. Oh, sure. A few of them have thrown applications for the futures ETFs too, because they like money. But uh, we really want the spot ETF. And unfortunately, Gary Gensler, this guy does not seem to be on board with giving people what they actually want. He's going to give Wall Street what they want, because of course he will, because he's Wall Street's boy. Next up, let's talk about why fiat is terrifying, the main topic of today's video. You have to understand, with fiat, the game is rigged. No one is steering the ship. Inflation's running rampant everywhere. Every single dollar that you're holding on to right now, you have to understand it's going to be worth dramatically less in a few years' time. The forces of inflation have gone exponential in the last few years. COVID crisis has pushed it right through the roof. Now, Jerome Powell, he's come out and says that the spike in inflation is lasting longer than expected. Yeah, you say, Jerome. It always lasts longer than expected. They've been saying that for years because they can't control inflation. I know they think they're the masters of the universe and they can pull this lever and pull that lever and they're going to control inflation and they can, you know, write PhD. People are going to write PhDs about, oh, Fed monetary policy. It's controlling inflation. Woohoo. No, the economic forces that are at hand here are way beyond what a central bank can control. Inflation is here. Inflation is destroying every single currency on the planet right now. It's eating the dollar, it's eating the euro, it's eating the yuan, it's every currency is getting hit. The US dollar, the world's global reserve currency, which is why we talk about it so much here on the channel, because it is the big daddy of the fiat family. Currently looking at 4% uh, inflation, 
realistically even higher than that for a lot of consumer goods. For example, prices are going up on a lot of things in a pretty dramatic way. 4% is likely under reporting as government agencies so often do. They try to make it seem better than it actually is and 4% is pretty shocking still realistically. And it's lasting longer than expected. And I think it's going to last longer than he thinks it lasts longer than it will expected last long time. Long time. <laughs> oh, man. Put some things in perspective for you. The Federal Reserve printed a trillion dollars in just eight months. This is the Fed balance sheet in trillions since the start of the year. We've gone from 7.4 trillion up to 8.4 trillion dollars. Burr, 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 That money printer is going crazy. And here is the effect of that. If your grandpa had put a hundred dollar bill into uh, an envelope for you that you could open up today, well, that hundred dollars from 1950 would be an equivalent of eight dollars and seventy cents. Think about that. I know it still says 100 on the bill, but what you could have bought with that back then dramatically more in just 70 years the dollar has lost 91.3 percent of its real value that's my dad's lifetime my dad's lifetime that's it's, it's um, lost that much of its real value think about that think about trying to hold wealth long term in that asset it's ridiculous it's ridiculous. It's only going down. And the level at which it's falling is accelerating pretty dramatically right now with the current central bank policies. And look, it's not just America. It's not just the dollar. A lot of places are going through this. Inflation rate in Argentina hit 51% last month. That's not the monthly rate. That's the rate that it's got up to uh, cumulatively but over the year. But holy cow. 51%. 51%. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the pain and the hardship that people in Argentina are living through with 51% inflation? All your dreams out the door. Whatever you thought you were going to do with your money, buy a house, buy a car, send your kids to go to a good university, all that stuff is withering away before your eyes. That's the reality of fiat money. Oh, sure, the U.S. dollar, 2% or 4%, that may not sound as shocking as 51%, but do the math. How many years until, at a 4% rate, how many years until the dollar loses half of its value? It's not going to be that long, realistically. Oh, Argentina, you guys have been getting hard, hit hard for a very, very long time with some pretty bad economic policy. Your government, doesn't matter what country you live in, doesn't matter how cool you think your government is, your government is not going to save you. In fact, most governments, most central banks, seem quite dedicated to destroying your wealth. You need to take charge, you need to buy some Bitcoin. And look, Argentina might be pretty shocking, but let's, let's just get down to the nitty-gritty here. It's way worse in some countries. Look at Sudan. The inflation rate is down in Sudan, which is good. It's good. <laughs> it slowed down. It was over 400% a couple months ago. Now it's down to only 387%. <laughs> and I know, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. But, 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 Lark, my fiat currency is a really good fiat currency. I live in Australia or New Zealand or the UK or the USA or Canada or France or some other place like that. I have a really strong fiat currency. I'm going to be okay. Look, just because yours isn't going, going at a 387% inflation rate does not mean you're not being inflated to death. It's death by a thousand cuts. That's inflation. That's fiat. Look at Bitcoin versus any fiat currency, and you will see the difference of what's happening here. Fiat currency purchasing power is going down, 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 down. And it's not stopping. It's not stopping. No central bank has a policy right now to stop that. They're all inflating the money. They're all inflating the money. Bitcoin, Bitcoin though, just going up, just going up. You may not get super rich 
by buying Bitcoin these days, but at least you're not going to slowly go poor by holding on to fiat. And here we go. Lebanon takes the crown this year. Lebanon's inflation rate is worse than Zimbabwe and Venezuela. This is the fate, of course, of all fiat currency. Eventually, they all, at some point, fall into a terminal decline, at which point they just spiral right down the toilet. Lebanon, man, we've covered this a lot on the channel. They've just been hit so hard by incompetent government and uh, all kinds of just insanity happening uh, locally. Any Lebanese person who had bought Bitcoin will have escaped that madness. And due to the capital controls, it's hard for people to even get money in or out of the country. Bitcoin, again, allows Lebanese family members to send Bitcoin into the country for people to use locally, getting right around the corrupt banking system and their capital controls. Crypto is the future. Bitcoin is the future. Stories like what we've covered today remind me of just how incredibly true that is and how powerful this technology actually is. Anyway, your question for today. Is inflation something that you think about? Is inflation something that worries you? Is inflation part of the reason why you're invested in cryptocurrencies in the first place? Curious to hear your thoughts on that down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.